Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. All right, perfect. To make something that millions and millions of people engage with is something to be impressed. Mark Zuckerberg and his 10 rules of greatness. We've had this tradition for, I don't know, probably seven or eight years at the company uh, where every week uh, we have a Q&A where, um, where our employees can come and ask me any question that they want about what's going on and um, what, the, what the direction of the company is or questions or things that they read about in the press or that their friends who use the product, um, what, what they're asking them. And, um, and it's been this really important tradition for us, um, both because we really believe in, in openness and communication, and that's kind of what Facebook is all about. Uh, but it's also really important for, for me and for um, running the company to be able to get feedback, right? And, and to be able to learn what's on people's minds, um, what, our, what our employees and folks um, who, who, are, who are part of our team are thinking about. And, um, and just kind of a lot of the time there are good questions that people ask that change the way that we, that we think about what we're building and what we're here to do in the world. And um, that often make us go think and reevaluate um, how we should be approaching different problems. So many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And you know, my answer to that question is, don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the the um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn, and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. I went and I, and I saw one of my mentors, Steve Jobs, and he told me that in order to reconnect with what I believed as the mission of the company, I should visit this temple that he had gone to uh, in India early on in his evolution of thinking about what he wanted Apple and his vision of the future to be. And so I went and I traveled uh, for, for almost a month and seeing the, the people, uh, seeing how, how people connected and having the opportunity to feel how much better the world could be if, if everyone had a stronger ability to connect, uh, reinforced for me the importance of, of what we were doing. And that is something that I've always remembered um, over the last 10 years as, as uh, we built Facebook. What do you think the three keys to your success are? Well, I think a lot of it goes back to those values, right? I mean, the values often come from the founder, the person running the company. So I think I believe those things probably the most strongly of, of people at the company. Move fast. Um, yeah, focus. move fast, be bold, right? Um, focus on impact. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think long-term focus is a, is a really important part of this. Right? And we've had a lot of opportunities to optimize for the shorter term, whether it's in selling the company or in doing different products that would have benefited us in the short term, but not optimized for the long-term impact. And um, and I, I just think. You know, opportunities like this don't come around that often. So when you get one, I feel like you almost have a duty to see it through and build it to be what it can be. When you're starting something, it's, um, it's just kind of hard. You need to be pretty headstrong about it, right? And there are going to be all these challenges that come up. And I think the main thing that you need to do is just not give up, right? And, um, and kind of know what you want to do. And, you know, the, the best entrepreneurs that who I've met don't really start companies because their goal is to build a company. They do it because they want to make a change in the world and help people. And I think if you, if you kind of stay true to that and, um, and if you just focus on kind of powering through no matter what the, the challenges are that will inevitably come up in your path, then um, you'll find that there are lots of tools that are available and a lot of people who will help you build what you're building. I always kind of like, I get a little upset whenever any media attention focuses on me personally and me leading Facebook. 
much less a movie. <laughs> but, um, it's, been, it's been kind of a bad year, hasn't it? <laughs> um, it turned out okay. Time Academy. Um, it turned out. It turned out. It turned out good. The time thing was awesome. Um, the um, that was that was really flattering. But like, but I think that it's one of these things that the media systematically gets wrong is that this idea that it's a person, right? It's never a person, right? It's it's always a team. And the most important thing, if you are an entrepreneur trying to build something, is you need to build a really good team. And that's what I spend a lot of my time on, right? I mean, I spend um, probably at least three hours a day with our core team, right, mm -hmm. uh, and doing things. I spend probably 25% um, of my time recruiting, finding good people, both outside the company and inside the company to put in more, uh, in, in more um, impactful roles. I remember distinctly, I had this one friend um, who I, I went and got pizza with almost every night. We did all our computer science problem sets together at, at Harvard. And at the time, I remember talking to him about how um, I was working on this Facebook thing and I, I thought it would be cool for Harvard and I, I really was excited about it because I wanted to use it. But at the same time, how I thought that over time, someone would definitely go build this version of this for the world, but it wasn't going to be us. It was going to be you know, Microsoft or you know, someone who <laughs> built software for hundreds of millions of people. It's like, who are we? We're college students, right? We're not qualified in any way to build this. And you know, I think a lot of my takeaway from that was that we just kind of cared more than those other companies about making it exist. So there's this inherent conflict in the system, though, which is, you know, are we trying to optimize newsfeed to give each person, all of you guys, the best experience when you're reading? Or are we trying to help businesses just reach as many people as possible? And in every decision that we make, we optimize for the first, for making it so that when for the, the people um, who we serve, who use Facebook and who are reading newsfeed, um, get the very best experience that they can. And that means that if a business is sharing content that's going to be useful for them, then we'll show that. But that means that if the business is sharing content that isn't going to be useful for them, um, we may not show that because it's probably more important that they learn about their friend who had a baby and their baby is healthy. So that's an important guiding principle for how we think about this stuff. And as the, um, and as the products continue to develop, there's just going to be more people sharing more things. Um, and we're going to continue to try to do our best at, at showing the best things that we can, understanding that there's no way that, we can, that a person will ever take the time to go through every one of the 1,500 things um, that are shared with them every single day. Um, so that's, but that's kind of how I think about organic reach. And um, you know, there are a lot of pages that are, going, that are doing quite successfully, and their organic reach is, is growing quite a bit because they're delivering content to people that they really want. Um, so if you're a business owner and you're thinking about how to use your free page on Facebook, I would just focus on trying to publish really good content that's going to be compelling to your customers and the people who are following you. The first set of schools that we launched out after Harvard were schools that had other kind of school-specific social networks. So I think it was Stanford had something, um, Columbia had something, and I think Yale had something. So I think why did you choose ones that had school-specific social networks? Because they I wanted to competitors. Well, I wanted to go to the schools that I thought would be the hardest for us to succeed at because First. I knew that if we had a product that was better than everything else that other students were making at other colleges, then it would be worth investing in and putting, and putting time into. But I didn't want to just kind of like get into a project where there would end up being this huge legacy of maintaining it if ultimately there were just going to be different things that were as good as it. I have this belief that you never build something great by doing it the same way that other people have done it. So there are a lot of things that, that there are best practices around, but for the core things that we want to do, when we have the decision to either do it the same way that someone else has done it, or do it in a different way, we're going to choose to do it in a different way. Um, and we really encourage people all throughout the company to, to, like, to think about things in that way and, and make bolder decisions. No, I think the real story is just you know, a lot of hard work. right? I mean, it's a lot of people who are engineers who kind of sit around and code, and, um, and we're here um, because we're trying to help people connect and we believe deeply in this mission and you know our community today has 1.35 billion people in it and there are 7 billion people in the world and we want to connect all of them and that's why we're here. When we can learn from people who have achieved great level of success and the phrase stand on shoulders giant. So for example, you've just watched a series of what make this person great. Now if you adopt these same behaviors, some may work for you, some may not. But the series and other videos that we share will hopefully help you achieve levels of greatness in your life. 
Adopting behaviors that successful people do will only help you out achieve more. You can take some and you can drop some. You don't have to do them all. Some may work for you, some may not. So uh, hopefully you learn from these behaviors, you start adapting some to your life. I get to create a video about what makes you great in the future. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching these videos. Thank you.